Recording in progress. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ahmadu huwa usalli ala Rasulil Kareem. Amma ba'd. Um, today, I might not sound as organized. Well, that's maybe a lot of times, but today it might sound like I'm not organized because I didn't have access to things, to put things together. So I know what I want to say, but in terms of documentation, I'm going to be actually doing the documentation as we speak. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, we're going to talk about the power struggle between spouses. So this is, if you remember how this connects with the past is we were talking about the bidding process. Everybody makes a request and then different things happen to that request. But one of the things that uh, overshadows couples is uh, the power struggle. So let me just uh, see if I can begin to type that in here. So what's the opposite of power struggle? Uh, that's what we're going to also talk about. But I want to share with you a verse of the Quran. Surah uh, Al-Anfal. Okay, so let me do this. Okay, so this is the verse we're going to look at first, and we're going to look at the opposite of this verse. So maybe one thing for me to explain uh, from the very beginning is that you know, the idea is consistent from the top to the bottom. So the rules that go to the companions of the prophet at the community level, those are the same rules. For example, be kind. That's true at the community level. It's also true at the family level. It's also true at the uh, leadership level, right? It's not like you have a separate set of rules at the leadership level and a separate set of rules at the community level, and a separate set of rules of interaction at the family level, right? So, for example, the way the husband is with the wife, the husband and wife are with the kids. It's all consistent. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something at the community level, uh, it's going to be true on the level that's above it and on the level that's below it, right? Okay, so one of the verses we want to look at is this particular verse, which is an extremely interesting verse. Uh, this is about the Battle of Uhud, but I want to focus on a specific aspect, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Atiullaha wa atiur rasul, obey Allah and His Messenger. Now, the example of this literally in terms of word pictures is this picture that I'm about to show you over here. If I can show it to you. This is Walata uh, This. What do you see two people doing? Pulling tug of war, right? So uh, that's what Tanaza'u. So Allah says Walata Nazau, meaning don't argue is the meaning, but the literal meaning is don't play tug of war with one another okay so what's the opposite of that so that's what we're interested in really knowing so when do people have power struggles in marriage what do they do what are the signs of power struggle and what's the opposite of that and in fact doing the opposite of that empowers people more than this because the result of this is given in the quran over here and don't dispute, as you see also in the English translation. What will happen? Fa, that fa after fa is fa sababia. So therefore, what will happen as a result is fatafshalu and you will falter, meaning you will lose your purpose of why you started to even argue. Meaning then you've seen arguments, they start at one point and then go to another point and another point, and so you falter, okay? 
you slip. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا And number, the second thing that happens as a result is what? وَتَزْحَبَ رِيحُكُمْ And you lose your motivation. Okay? You lose your motivation. So if you're in argument and in a power struggle, which we're going to discuss a little bit more about, what does it mean to be in a power struggle? Uh, if you're in a power struggle, and what does that mean? So let me actually explain that because that's important to understand that what is a power struggle? And by the way, in different words, in different ways, different uh, researchers have come to the same conclusion, meaning uh, one group of psychologists, uh, another group of psychologists, another group of psychologists, they're all coming to a very similar conclusion. The only problem with Western academics is sometimes they find something and then they take it to the extreme, that this is the only solution rather than trying to integrate it. I'll give you one example. So, you know, Freud felt sex is the greatest impulse of human beings. So he made everything about sex, right? Uh, but that's just taking it to an extreme. There's truth in it, but it's their observations are true. Many times the Western thinkers, their observations are true, but their conclusions are wrong. And the same thing happened with Edler, who said everything is about power, right? So Edler said everything's about power. The, his observations were true. His conclusions were wrong. And then you have other people uh, that made this similar mistake. This same type of mistake has been made by some Westerners also when it comes to the issue of marriage, which I'm going to talk about later on as we get into this issue okay but there are many verses about not disputing but there's an opposite of that too and the opposite of that is an aqulu bil kunna we'll speak the truth where we ever are la nakhafu and we will not fear the blame of any blamer we're going to speak the truth so what's the difference between the verses of the quran that say we will speak the truth meaning this is part of their value system that we have to speak the truth right in fact as many of you all will be knowing that one of the verses of the quran for nikah is uh sadida, say the straight word say the truthful word in surah al-araf allah says say the straight the truthful thing so if you say the truthful thing then you can ask the question well if you're saying the truthful thing is that not leading to an argumentation right because if you're saying the truth that will lead to argumentation. And I'm saying that no, if you do it right, it won't. Because you have to understand the difference between power struggle and the opposite of power struggle. What is a power struggle? Power struggle, tanaza'u, is when you put, now listen to what I'm saying. When you put expectations and demands on someone so that they will change or modify their behavior to what you expect them to do, right? That is, uh, that is what we don't want in a relationship. We want people to change, but what we don't want is a power struggle. Uh, so let me just uh, put this down here so everyone can kind of understand this is power struggle. And when you, when you demand and have expectation, expectations to change behavior, and I'll tell you how it works. Okay, I don't know if I spelled that right, but we'll deal with it for now, okay? Why? Because if you love me, if, if you love me, it will equal to, you will do what I say. So now the question here is, what's the difference between dispute, meaning what? Power struggle versus what? So this is what I want to show you. Now, part of I gave that to you is to say the truth. But what does that mean to say the truth? And that is best defined by this verse of the Quran that I'm going to show you here. 
<clears throat> Sorry, I'm making my notes as we're going along kind of thing, but it's very, very interesting uh, that the Quran deals with this subject in quite detail, actually. Now, now in the verses of the Quran that talk about uh, that talk about fasting, okay? So it's about month of Ramadan, okay? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about marriage in the month of Ramadan is very interesting. And Allah gives you the opposite of argumentation, which I'm going to explain to you. So what happened is some of the companions of the Prophet they were not sure if they're permitted to have uh, intimacy with their wives, okay? But it was allowed, but they weren't sure. But despite not being sure, they were having intimacy with their wives with the hopes that that would be the case, but they weren't sure in their heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ الصَّيَامِ It is... Halal for you in the night of Sayyam, Rafathu ila nisa'ikum, that you have intimacy with your wives. Now, this is the part that I want to highlight. Well, I want to highlight two things, but this is the main part about today's topic. Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. Now, notice this you are a covering for them, and they are a covering for you. What is the meaning of this, right? And how is this the opposite of dispute? This is what we're going to look at. Uh, I want you to think about, okay, you're arguing to change someone or to you're demanding to change someone's behavior. How is that different from or the verse of the Quran, speak the truth. O oh, you people who believe, speak the truth. Allah will make your affairs right. So let me also show you that uh, verse of the Quran so that everybody has a picture. I know I'm making my notes as I'm speaking. They can't see that I'm speaking. Zoom should be fine, dear. Okay, let me see if I can find it. If not, then... Okay. What is this? Works Can you repeat that, please? I find you to be zoom meeting, so oh. that way I can see the device that you were showing. Oh, okay. So that can show you. Okay, so let me try that again. Let's see if this works better. Is this working now? Mm -hmm. Yes, this works now. Thank you. Can you give this back? All right, it's very important that I make this basic point before we leave today. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll just uh, mention this this way then. So, and don't dispute. How is that different from truth? And how does it relate to? They are a covering for you and you are a covering for them. Okay. So what am I? I hope you're following along with what my notes are saying. Uh, they, meaning the wives, are a covering for you and you are a covering for them versus or or here speaking 
the truth versus dispute. Now, one thing I already said about dispute, dispute is about what? Demanding and having expectations to change what? Behavior. In the ayah that this is talking about, it was talking about dispute in which one party wanted the other party to do something that they wanted. Okay, So a companion of the Prophet said, don't move from this place. I'm your Amir. Don't move from here. The other companion said, well, look, we already won. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls that wala tanaza'u. You can you look at this word at other places in Quran too. But tanaza'u is like a tug of war where you're trying to modify other people's behavior because of what you feel they should do if they uh, are friends with you or if they love you. Okay. How is that different from speaking the truth? Now, this is what I wanted to share with you. And that is speaking the truth means, now let me write this down. Speaking the truth means not arguing or not expecting the other person to necessarily change their behavior because it's more about you. Your, let me put it this way. Equal to your truth, equal to speaking the truth means being vulnerable. Bringing, talking about I feel scared because X, Y, Z. This is what? Your what? Truth. This is different from you should do this if you love me. Right? Do you get it? Versus the opposite of that is to be vulnerable. This is why Allah says, Hunna libasun lakum. They are covering for you. Because you allow yourself to be vulnerable, not just physically. But emotionally, until emotionally, look, this is my fear, right? So how do you know somebody is having a power struggle? So let's talk about that. Signs of power struggle. Uh, one sign is you hide information, for example, from your spouse. Why do you hide information? Uh, you don't commit to do not. Commit to uh, your word or you do not commit whatever the issue is, okay? Uh, you hide information. What do you do? Sometimes people play power struggles by uh, yelling, screaming. There's a passive ways of doing it. There's a... a aggressive ways of doing it, but it's a power struggle where you're playing your cards so that you have the upper hand in the uh, in the live with the spouse, okay? Rather than speaking the truth, which is you actually, now, what does it mean speak the truth? Now, let me just uh, pass this down. Truth means you talk about the elephant in the room. Okay, here, one of the power struggle signs is money. It's actually probably one of the biggest ones, money issues, okay? When people, maybe let's say a husband is not telling his wife about how much he's earning at the office. Why? Because he wants to be, con in con money is a big, power issue it's 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 very very big power issue um that that's a whole discussion in itself marriage and money the biggest reason people get divorced is money issues okay so but there's a power struggle and if somebody feels in the marriage either because of positive reasons or negative reasons that they're that they're that they need more power or that it's their right to have more power or that they feel that they're struggling in the relationship for some reason, then people start playing the uh, the card of, uh, it's, uh, okay, so I'm talking about two different things here. One is changing someone's behavior. You'll do this if you love me, right? But that is what one scientist called imitation love. Like, okay, maybe because I don't have my notes today, so I'm like, um, saying 
they all fit, but I have to explain it how they all fit in, in at least in my mind. Okay, so um, how are tanazau argument for getting the results you want, or let me put it another way, expectations that you want or demands that you want is different from speaking truth. Okay, speaking truth means you make yourself for lack, I mean, because the Quran uses it, I'll use the same word, make yourself naked. And then she comes and she becomes your covering. She says, oh, I understand that's your fear. That's your truth. He, he can say, you know, I, I really, I'm just giving it as, as, as an example. Uh, I come home tired. I need to rest for the first 20 minutes. So it's, he's not making it about her. He's not making it about changing her behavior. He's not, he is expressing what he feels. And then she can say, you know what? Yes, you do feel tired when, you're com when you come home. So I'm gonna try to do this A, B, C, D. It's not a dispute. It's a conversation, but the point of the conversation is not to change the person. It is to share your, your fears or your hopes or your desires. It's not demand and it's not expectations. It is to make yourself vulnerable. You're giving away ammunition to the other person that maybe later on they can use against you even, right? So it could be like, for example, a uh, dispute could be an example. I mean, a dispute could be like, uh, I'm not going to tell you how much money is my, in my bank account because of X, Y, Z reason. So you're trying to, that's a power struggle, right? Versus I feel scared to tell you what's in my bank account because I fear it's going to result in A, B, C, D. It's talking about the elephant in the room. The real power is the power to knock down walls in the relationship. Meaning, what is the walls? The walls is the elephant in the room, right? How successfully can you knock down the walls that you have learned not to talk about to talk about those and the reason we don't talk about those is because we feel vulnerable and if you look at the conversation of the prophet sallallahu he always let himself be in a vulnerable situation with everyone like he talked about his innermost uh vulnerability right i mean that after all that's what it means to you know in kisar or to break yourself before Allah. It's, it's the idea of knowing your vulnerabilities. And when you know your vulnerabilities before Allah, you will know your vulnerabilities before human beings. Because the requests and breaking before Allah is what has to do with your situation in your life and things that are happening in people's lives. So I hope I'm able to, I hope I made it clear so far what is the difference between and what's the result of that? Now we can go back and look at that because, you know, it's meaning when you do the opposite, the result will be different or the opposite of that. So many things Quran says, the result of that would be the opposite of that if you did the opposite of that. So obey Allah and his messenger. Okay. Obeying a line as messenger has many levels, but one of the things it does, it lets a person learn about their vulnerabilities. Because I know how I fail Allah, and I know how I fail the messenger. And that allows me to know my vulnerabilities, right? That the prophet said, be like this with your wife. I know I'm not like that with my wife. So I have to have the courage to say, I know I have to be nice to you. And I know I'm not being nice to you. Rather than being defensive, rather than having a dispute, it's the vulnerability that allows the relationship to move forward. So, and don't dispute what will be the opposite of that. Instead of disputing, do what Allah said, obey Allah and His Messenger, 
which is to allow yourself to become naked in the sense of vulnerability. And then instead of فَتَفْشَلُ uh, uh, you will slip. Instead of that, what will happen? You will, your actions become better. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I couldn't find the verse, but where it says, Say the straight, truthful word. Allah will make your affairs right. So over here, Allah said, if you argue, your affairs will become slipped. Right? So, and your courage and your steadfastness will be lost. Versus if you allow yourself to be vulnerable, even if one partner out of the two allows themselves to become vulnerable in front of their spouse, there's a good chance it will force the other spouse to become vulnerable too. Right? And so you're not coming from a position of, if you love me, change. Or you're not coming from a position of, uh, I, I will argue with you so you will change. But you're coming from a position of, of vulnerability that I need you to change. Not that I need you to change. That's the whole point. I, I am expressing a fear I have. Or I'm expressing uh, regrets I have. Or I'm expressing some truth of mine that uh, I wouldn't necessarily, if I was in an argumentation, I wouldn't say that, right? So I don't know if I explained this right, but I hope you got a basic idea uh, of what I was trying to say here. So the opposite of argumentation is to speak the truth. Because in argumentation, you're being, even though you may have truthful words, but your intent isn't to be vulnerable or to be truthful. Your intent is to win the argument and your intent is to demand something on the person so they will change their behavior. So now I mentioned something else that goes along with that, which is signs of power struggle. What does that mean? How does that relate to what we were talking about? Signs of power struggle happen because the couple have fallen into a state of dispute Instead of what? In, instead of a state of what? Truth, Truth or vulnerability, right? Uh, like a lot of times, how do you spell vulnerability? Vulner I'll just say truth. V U N? V U N what? V U N B R A. D-I-L-I-T-Y. Thank you. Okay. Dispute versus truth, vulnerability. Okay. So if she comes to him with vulnerabilities, he covers her. And if he, she, and he comes to her with his vulnerability, she covers him. The way Khatija did to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he became a prophet. Right? So the true dispute doesn't lead to any good results. But truth and vulnerability leads to many good results. And so you're, you have to see, is your conversation uh, talking about the elephant in the room? Talking about the elephant in the room. Now, let's go. Uh, okay, I already wrote that there. Okay, now let's talk about the next thing, which is expectations, expectations, and okay, before I talk about expectations and demands, let me ask, is everyone following what I'm saying so far? Does it does it kind of make sense? Because sometimes it doesn't make sense to me either. But there is truth to this. Okay. Uh, truth. Uh, okay. Expectations and demands. So the question is, remember when I said that, this is to kind of give you an idea of how Western 
uh, Western thinking has evolved in, especially in this issue of arguments and so on and so forth. For example, I forget there's a famous psychologist. Uh, actually, he's not even a psychologist, uh, but he's done some research in this work. He's pretty popular. He has a very famous uh, research on this, but I forget his name right now. It escapes my mind. So like, for example, he what did I say about these researchers? Because they don't have the prophetic guidance. They're their and their observations of human beings is usually correct. Their conclusions are many times what? Wrong. So when they are writing a book, uh, I become more interested particularly in their observations, uh, not necessarily their conclusions because their liberalism or their whatever ideological bent they have might influence their conclusion. But I'm more interested in their observations as they express them in their uh, research work. Well, this famous person whose name I don't remember right now, he came to the conclusion uh, that uh, never have any expectations in a marriage because that's not true love. That was his main point. Uh, uh, let's see what is being said here. Um, does it have moving or un or without? Okay, uh, I'm not understanding this part except for the part of elephant in the room. Can you rephrase the statement? Okay, so while that's going on, let me go back to Loma uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so let me, uh, I was going to share something with you. Uh, okay, yeah, demands and expectations. So this, um, psych, psych, he wasn't a psychologist, he was something else. But uh, he said that never have any expectations because what he observed, so now we're talking about what did he see in his research, not his conclusion. He observed that when people have expectations, they will say something like, you should have done this if you love me. Or, um, uh, you know, if you love me, you'll do this, right? If you love the uh, love us, you'll do this. And what he calls it, and I forget the name of his book and this person's name, but he calls it imitation love. Why? Because even if the person did it, even though you're saying to yourself, oh, see, he did this and he loves me, but it's an imitation because he wasn't going to do it in a sense. And so how far can imitation love go? Meaning how far will it go in a relationship? Now, what am I trying to say with this is that where is the balance between uh, expectation and just, now listen to what I'm saying, expectations and demands versus, versus speaking the truth without expecting what? Change of or without expecting results is everyone following me because when you put expectations and demands you are asking the person to change their behavior when you're speaking the truth it doesn't come from a place of do this if you love me right it's something transcendent from even yourself and your spouse it is about your fear or your regret or a hope, but it's not with expecting necessarily. It's more about sharing. That's actually the proper word uh, that I want to use here. It's about sharing. Okay. It's you're just sharing. You don't know what will happen. You're you don't know what will happen as a result of speaking that truth. Sometimes if you just speak even your vulnerable truth, it can backfire. And sometimes if you speak the vulnerable truth, it will bring down elephants and walls and help the relationship grow. Okay. So expectation and demands versus speaking the truth. Is there a balance between this? Is there a balance between the two? 
Meaning, how much of your marriage can you, is it okay to expect demands to put on the husband or on the wife or expectations on the husband and the wife versus speaking the truth, right? So what's the balance between the, 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 the two? This is a very hard question. Very, very hard question. I think this is the question that each couple has to sit down and answer for themselves. Okay. That uh, are the, if the, it depends on the people involved, because um, let's say, let's say a husband is lazy. And the wife is very um, fast. Okay. What will be her fear? Her fear. That what? Lazy equal what? Let's just make this simple. He will fail to take care of me, right? That's her fear. He's lazy. He'll fail to take care of me. And what? I will end up doing everything. I will end up doing everything. So now that can lead to dispute. Or she can talk about the elephant in the room and say something like, I feel I or I fear I fear I will end up doing everything and etc 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 versus doing what you have to do this and this and this So you're basically putting demands. Which approach should you take? Which approach will work in your case? You should know that only talking in terms of demands will ultimately lead to negative effects. But there may be times when, now I'm going to tell you when, you start off talking vulnerability and you negotiate, negotiate a contract of understanding, which then allows you to demand for a person to keep what? Their words or promise. So you have to start off the conversation at the level of vulnerability, not even expecting a change. It is more about how you feel and how that situation is affecting you. And it is only when that there has been a successful conversation and a successful negotiation and a successful understanding between the two, can the other spouse go to the other spouse and say, look, we had this understanding and this didn't happen. Now you have a moral basis to say why, right? And so that will lead to its own. So we're not, we're not going into right now. This is not a discussion of why, which you can call the why of breaking a contract, breaking a contract. We're only talking about the proper way to get to a contract. So proper way to get to a contract or understanding. Okay, a, uh, another example could be, uh, a husband says, uh, I don't like you in your pajamas at night. 
Okay. And then he tells her, he breaks down the wall and tells her what he really wants. And she agrees. And she says, okay, I'm not going to wear pajamas at night. And then she wears pajama again. So now the conversation type has changed. Okay. So that's what it is. Be the, the, everything has to start with the truth. Has to start with vulnerability. When you put, now let me go back to the beginning of this kind of conversation. When you put out your bid, how much time do we have? And that gives me how much time? Okay, 15 minutes. Okay, so you put out your bid. Your request. You should, okay, I wanted to balance this with something very important. Let's just break this for a second here. There's a verse in the Quran or a portion of the Quran, and then also comes in the bayah of the Prophet, which is, An aqulu bil haqqi kunna. We will speak the truth. Let me write it down here. And this is also in the Quran. We will speak. We will speak the truth wherever we are. And we will we will not fear the blame of the blamer this is actually such an interesting statement because of the word fear and blame and truth all coming together it's like very packed um but i'm not going to unpack it right now um but this is a phrase in the quran right so if you look at something as simple as uh sut al asr <laughs> Sorry. The four conditions to have salvation, right? So the last two are tawasul bil haq, to encourage the truth. Haq, speak the truth. But the speaking the truth, the truth doesn't come to blame someone or to necessarily even demand something. It comes to just shed light on the truth itself. And then what does Allah say? After you have encouraged others, tawasaw, this is tafa'alu, so it means like a, a two-way, like qatalu, tafa'alu, bay'u, this is like a two-way process, like a, you're doing something and they're doing something, right? Tawasaw bil haq. You enjoin one another to truth. You don't give nasiha to necessarily control behavior. You hope the behavior will change, but it's not coming from that place. It's not coming from, I'm giving this nasiha because I want to change your behavior. No, it's coming from a place of, I'm going to tell you what I would want to hear if I was in your place, right? So tawasul bil haq. And what does it come with? Tawasul bil sabr. And you have to also push one another towards sabr. Now compare these verses with uh, these verses here in uh, in Allah ma sabirin at the end, right? Don't argue, have what? Sabr, right? Sabr meaning, the word sabr, by the way, in the Arabic language is a very interesting word. It comes from sibr, which is the alloy that's bitter. Right, so it's bitter medicine. You have sabr; it will. Uh, so it's not that you stop doing what you're supposed to do. Sabr doesn't mean patience in the sense of. It means perseverance, and patience together. So if this, if the Sahaba were told to have patience, it wasn't didn't mean like you leave Islam. No, it means you keep Islam and you persevere in in that with patience. And so the same thing here. When you put in this, give people, this is very important for this process to work, which is that when you speak the truth, it's like you put seeds in, put 
seeds in and give people time to grow with those seeds. Okay. So whenever you're going to speak the truth, because when you demand, why are you demanding? This is, this is an important point that I'm about to make. Because you want the change immediately, right? And when you have expectations, you want to change the behavior, what? Immediately. That's why you're arguing, because you want it there and then. But when you speak the truth, when you speak the truth from the perspective of, I'm telling you how I feel. And I'm not going to fear the blame of any blamer. You can blame me for speaking the truth, but I need to bring this out. Okay? And this is my fear. And when you do that, you're coming not from a perspective of, I want immediate change from you. But you're saying, okay, look, I'm giving this to you. This is how this makes me feel. Now you, uh, I'm going to give you time and trust that you're going to come back with an understanding of this vulnerability of mine with you opening up to me with your vulnerability. But that takes time. May not happen the first time, may not happen the second time or the third time. You continue in this process until there is a negotiation or a contract or an understanding. And then that leads to a different type of discussion, like I said. But to have results, you have to come with the truth, okay? Now, there may be some gaps in terms of thought in this, and we can deal with those uh, specifically case by case, but that's the general standard, right? Every single time I've seen like, uh, I'll give you an example, a very famous, you all know Javed Jamshed, mm -hmm. right? So like he was a singer and all that, and he was married and then he becomes religious. How did he change his family? Well, he didn't use the, like I'm demanding change from you, my wife, you change, start wearing hijab right now and start doing niqab right now and start doing this and this. That's not how he came, right? He came with vulnerability. And like, I want us to seriously, you know, he led by example with his family. He left the business. I mean, it's a big deal for a wife to see his her husband leave the music industry and change and all of that. And when he was vulnerable in front of her and said, look, this is my fear that, you know, my sisters are now going to these concerts. And they're also now doing what, you know, everyone else does. And I don't want that. I want to change my life. And uh, so he allowed himself to be vulnerable. He gave her time. He didn't know what the change would, he didn't know or didn't, uh, I mean, he was hoping and praying for a certain change, but he didn't know or didn't demand change. He just wanted to put those seeds in her mind and let her decide what she wanted to do. And then she went along with him. And then that, you know, that's a longer story. But I'm just saying that the most difficult, you know, when this usually happens in relationships, even though this is a very bad example, is in a good, in a good example, in a good example, this happens in a relationship when the husband or the wife get caught cheating. Because then they have no choice but to tell the truth and be vulnerable, and they know the guilt is theirs. And then that, if it's done properly, might still fix the relationship. But if he starts disputing, hiding, ignoring, blaming the other person, that will lead to further dispute, which will lead to the dissolving of the marriage. Now, this is the first point I wanted to share with you. Uh, but let me ask if there's any questions at this point, I guess. Wa'fu. Yes, yes. Does it have a perspective moving on without constantly bringing the elephant in the room? Yes. Okay. So this is actually a good question. So you can say there are 
let's go to that verse that you're referring to because these two surahs of the Quran, they're like tremendously interesting when it comes to marriage. And these are twin surahs, Surah so Tahrim and Surah so Talaq. They're both about marriage. Okay. And uh, I think you're referring to the Ayan Surah so Tahrim. Uh, no. Surah so Talaq. What did I miss? This is the ayah of Tughabun. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu. This is the verse that someone is referring to. Oh, you people believe. Inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwul lakum. Indeed, in your wives and in your children is your enemies. Now, this has many interpretations, including the fact that if you behave wrong against them, then they're your enemy, or they're your enemies because they're keeping you away from the deen of Allah. It has many interpretations. Fahzaruhum, beware of them. Now, the next part is what is being referred to. in ta'fu. If you overlook, or or uh, in ta'fu, if you ta'fu uh, is better if you pardon. Tasfahu, if you overlook. You know, safha, saf means safha means like a page. So you turn the page, like you turn the page. So that's turn the page, like as if it didn't happen. So sometimes ignore that something happened. And you forgive. Okay. So if you're ta'fu, if you're kind, if you overlook, and if you forgive, then Allah is ghafur rahim. You do that because you want Allah to be merciful to you. This situation is different from what I'm talking about. Even though it's interrelated, meaning there would, if you take a, what is that thing called where you have two circles and there's an overlap between them? Venn diagram, right? So th there is an overlap. But this is what I'm referring to is more about uh, the things about vulnerabilities. This ayah is more talking about, okay, the family is supposed to be a place of sukun. And or a place of tranquility. And because things are happening you don't like, it could become potentially a warlike zone. And it says it's better for you to not let that wars, the, even if something is wrong is happening, it's better not to let the family fall into a war time. Like don't create a war, which will spoil even the purpose of having a family. So this is a little bit different than what I'm talking about, but it is interrelated, yes. Okay, uh, any questions from the sisters or brothers so far? Let me see how much time I have. Oh, okay, I think we have a lot of time. Okay, no one has any questions. Okay, so let me go to the next point here. Okay, so the question then is, okay, so how do we deal with things? So let me now go back to, uh, just look at these uh, pictures that I found about marriage and struggle. Marry for love. You try to get your spouse to be who you hope they would be. This involves judgment and criticism, meaning now you're demanding and expecting. Growth and change stops and defensiveness begins. 
because you're disputing and arguing. Old issues kick in and the power struggle begins. This is where the problems get big and seem insurmountable. So you kind of like see how things uh, go, right? Uh, okay, so I, I copied and pasted this from one of the books. Uh, it's important for both of you, both of you have an understanding of the negative impact of a power struggle in a relationship. The point of these arguments is for one person to win. That typically involves one person hurting the other until they give in. So everyone's playing this game. In fact, there's a very interesting book, even though it was written in the 70s. Uh, it's called Games We Play. Uh, No, this is not the book. Maybe I'm games. No, it's not this book. Yes, it's this book. This book by Eric is a really interesting book, okay? Uh, this, is, this is what happens. When there is a power struggle, when there is a power struggle, we start playing a game, not, I mean, he defines the word game as he sees it. A game doesn't mean that we're playing a game, but it becomes like a chess game in a sense. That I'm gonna make this move and he's gonna make this move and then I'm gonna make this move to show him that, you know, he's wrong and I'm right. And you're playing like a chess game with one another. So this book uh, has some interesting points about the games we play, which uh, let me go back to what I was saying. Okay, so the point of these arguments is for one person to win, which that typically involves one person hurting the other until they give in. Sometimes it will feel like there is a sense of peace in the household afterward. Now, this is a very important point. Sometimes because you play a game or you avoid the game, sometimes it will feel like there is a sense of peace in the household afterward, but there isn't because the original conflict was never resolved. And that is what happens is over the years, people forget about what was the original issues that started it all. And all I know is I'm resentful now, but I don't remember why I'm resentful now. And so now I'm arguing about the things that make me resentful now, but we never go back to the original issues and unpack those. So sometimes it will feel like there's a sense of peace in the household afterward, but there isn't. The original conflict never did not get resolved. Instead, one person simply submitted to the other, whichever one of you that was will make will more than likely not feel comfortable communicating in the future. So if you renounce and withdraw from the uh, dispute, right? If one of the two spouses says, okay, you win, I lose, I'm not gonna engage, I don't wanna conflict. And what will happen as a result? That because one person submitted to it and didn't bring up the truth, what will happen as a result, there will be a sense of peace and security in the family, but in fact, it will not be there and it will just take another time where that conflict or it'll just create resentment. Instead, one person has simply submitted to the other, whichever one of you that was will more than likely not feel comfortable communicating in the future. This does more damage in the long run. It breeds resentment, fueling the fire for more intense arguments down the road. So a lot of people, what they do, a lot of men, a lot of women, they see that there is a dispute. There is a game of who is going to win being played. Uh, they want to get along. So they do or they withdraw from that dispute or when they withdraw. But what happens? That person that withdraws is now going to, you're, is going to have resentment. 
and he's going to live with that resentment or she's going to live with that resentment. And it's not going to get resolved until they both sit down and talk about that resentment. What is creating that resentment? Okay. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay. Pa acknowledge power struggle in the relationship. So how to deal with power struggle in relationships. First is to acknowledge, wait, we're having a power struggle here. You don't want to share with me how much money is in the bank account. There's a power struggle. So let's acknowledge that this situation exists rather than pretend it doesn't exist. Acknowledge the power struggle in the relationship. Overcome communication problems, meaning you have to come to a point of negotiation. Uh, put an end to the chronic conflicts, meaning those conflicts that happen over and over again, those are the worst. Uh, don't play the victim card. Meaning either side should not play victim, the, nor the husband, nor the wife. Because the point of being, the point of dispute then becomes, okay, if you lose, then what does the loser do? Become the victim. So don't play that either. But rather play the role of, okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Because by playing the victim, you're again, just exasperating the situation of resentment for another time. And you give the other person the feeling of, okay, I won, this always works. I'm, it's like a child that knows that if I cry for 20 minutes, I'll eventually get what I want because the parents give up. So it, this is what happens with husbands and wives. We end up playing the same game over and over again. And part of what happens in counseling is to figure out what is this dance between the husband and wife? Like, how do it's because it's the same thing. We fall into patterns. Even dispute is, becomes a pattern, right? And then the person knows if I say this, they'll give in. Or if I raise this much noise, they'll withdraw. Then the person withdraws, feels some sort, sort of uh, semblance by becoming the victim. But it doesn't solve the problem. The only way you're going to solve the problem is by speaking the truth. And you have, so, th so there, so th one is you're arguing and fighting in this war. That's not going to solve anything. Withdrawing is not going to solve the problem, but speaking the truth, not from the perspective of, I want you to change, but speaking the truth in terms of, this is my truth. That's what's going to, that's the, the, you could say the middle path that is very hard. You know, and it's very interesting. The Quran says, anakulu bil haqqa. We will say the truth wherever we are. We won't fear the, because it's very hard to speak the truth without being in a dispute in which you want to win the war, right? It's very hard. So don't play the victim card, accept and embrace your differences. And there is a, instead of changing the person to who you want, maybe there is something to be understood about the personality of the other person, or that person's fears. What is that person's fears? That you needs to be acknowledged on both sides, but that conversation has to take place. Now, I hope I'm not speaking too abstract, right? I'm making sense? Okay, good. Uh, okay, I won't talk about this today. Okay, yeah, we'll leave that for another time we will look at this five steps to end end power struggles with your mate number one slow down pause and name what's happening meaning identify the game identify the real reason behind the dispute what is behind every dispute is a certain pain behind every dispute is a certain vulnerability behind every Dispute is an actual truth, okay? So slow down, pause, and name what's happening. Own your part, okay? Takes two to tangle. It takes two to have a power struggle, right? Even when you're playing victim or you're withdrawing 
and not bringing out the truth and not talking about the elephant in the room, you're just enabling that to happen again the next time and the next time and the next time. And you're happy with the level of peace that exists in between these. So talk about it without blame or shame. Because the purpose of blaming someone is to shame them. And a lot of times when you blame someone, there is internal shame. So challenge yourself, share your feelings underneath, meaning become vulnerable. Be patient. This is this outline out of all of them. I found this to be the closest to the Quran, by the way, out of all of the studies. This one was the one that was outlined to the teeth according to the Quran. Okay, so let me uh, end by going over this one more time because I think it's good enough to just think about this and let this sink in. Slow down. Pause and name what's happening. Okay, could be at the emotional level, could be at the level of how you two play a game or how you two or what is your trigger, what triggered, what created a trigger response. What is the part that you played in this? Own your part. Then you have to talk about it. Talk about the elephant in the room. Challenge yourself. Share the feeling underneath. What is the fear? What are you scared of? How does it you know, affect you? Be patient. It takes time to practice to end power struggles. So that is the lesson for today. I think that's enough. Because if I get deeper, uh, I mean, yeah, so I think this is enough for now. So if there's any questions, I'll take the questions. If there's no questions, then we can continue next time. I mean, a lot of this is, seems very like, heavy or difficult. Is it better done with some moderator or something like this? Is it something, you know, this uh, mentioning certain types of parties and for others? So, so yeah, I mean, sometimes if, if people are willing to be vulnerable. So despite the fact that there's power struggles, and I'll tell you something. There are studies that show <clears throat> there are studies that show that going to a counselor causes more divorces for many reasons, for many reasons. But there are other studies that show that if the two parties are willing to negotiate, or let me put it another way, if the two parties are willing to be vulnerable, or let me put it another way. If the two parties are willing to be truthful, then they can either do it themselves, or if it's more difficult, they can do it with a moderator. But the idea is to bring out the truth, not from the perspective of blame or who's right, but for, the other, for each person to understand the other person's truth, meaning vulnerability. At least one person has to initiate. And then when that person sees, okay, my spouse is really trying hard. And, you know, uh, if he appreciates that, then he might start taking steps at some point. Like I said, if you come from a, the perspective of vulnerability, it usually has better results long run, but it doesn't show you immediate results. Whereas demanding and challenging and showing expectations gets you the immediate results, but it doesn't have the long-term uh, bonding that vulnerability does. So I feel like if one person is vulnerable, the other person, or let's sound more vulnerable, the other person doesn't, then it would create more problems. So this is exact, thank you for bringing this up. Now that's a very, is, that. yeah. This is exactly what we have to get over. Because that is actually what the what it is, is that why should I be vulnerable and expose myself, right? When, when he'll just step all over my feelings and my fears and my vulnerabilities. Or she, right? Depending upon the situation. So why should I tell her my truth, my real fears, 
the why I do A, B, C, D, or, but the, the reality is without vulnerability, there is no truth. And without truth, what Quran says is very simply, say the truthful word and Allah will make your affairs right. But it takes one person to actually be truly vulnerable. And if the person, the other person has enough humanity in him or her, then what will happen? He will respond in likewise. It's like this. When you're arguing, if your tone is high, the other person's tone is high too. If your tone is low, the other person's tone is going to be low too. Until something triggers and then one of the spouse's tone goes up. So even though it seems like it, it's more about why should I be vulnerable first than my spouse? It's more about that. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. At least something to think about. And we will take this further based upon some other studies uh, next week, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.